Today we're taking a look at the Cooler Master Atmos 240 all-in-one liquid cooler. Cooler Master had contacted me about reviewing this unit, and after taking a look at it, I thought it was going to be probably an awesome option for mid-range gaming builds, so I was pretty happy to agree. The Atmos 240 is of course a 240mm rad with two 120mm fans. I noticed right away when unboxing the Atmos that the fans were actually pre-installed, which by the way was kind of a nice touch. The fans included here are the CM Sickleflow Edge 120s. Cooler Master says that these are the latest version of these fans, which are capable of pushing 70.7 CFM at a maximum rotational speed of 2700 RPM with a maximum static pressure rating of 3.61 millimeters to H2O. It's actually a pretty decent static pressure rating for a 120 millimeter fan at 2700 RPM, at least in my opinion. The fans achieve this kind of airflow while staying relatively quiet at 27.2 dBA per fan. The fans, as well as the pump setup, have nicer braided cables. Not really a performance thing, but I did like that attention to detail. They look nice and they're easy to work with. From looking at the documentation, the pump setup looks like it's one of the latest dual chamber designs that Cooler Master was able to get. The pump runs at just under 4 watts total, and it outputs about 13 to 14 dBA worth of sound. The pump housing does support ARGB, which is nice, it can be controlled by your motherboard or the Master Plus software, but Cooler Master is actually working on building support for these coolers into the newer Master Control software for a future release, so stay tuned on that. As far as customization goes, the top piece of the Atmos pump housing can actually be removed, allowing you to install custom 3D printed options. I think this is kind of a nice feature to allow, but in my case, I like the stock look, so I'm probably going to keep that. Over the course of working with the Atmos 240 here, it's pretty clear that this is really targeted to be more of a premium type of option for gaming builds. All of the cabling has pretty nice sheathing on it, the tubes have a nice feel as well, the fans were even pre-installed. We're also getting pretty much every accessory you could possibly need with an all-in-one liquid cooler. We've got the PWM fan splitter, an ARGB three-way splitter cable, an ARGB hub, USB control cabling, as well as two tube management clips. Everything was also packaged pretty nicely and very well labeled. There were separate boxes for all the mounting kits and the accessories, and overall, the installation was just relatively easy. I know on coolers we typically get very caught up in the performance, and that really is a huge part of buying a cooler. Cooler Master even states that they cut down on the overall packaging and size of the boxes to make it more efficient. Kinda cool there. Like I said, the installation was very easy. I installed the Atmos 240 into the Cooler Master CMP520, and it's cooling my Ryzen 7700X, which I have running with PBO enabled. In terms of the testing, I ran a couple of benchmarks. Asus Realbench and Prime95 are pretty much my go-tos for temperature testing. The ambient temperature during my testing was about 70 Fahrenheit or about 21.1 or 2C. I ran Realbench and Prime95 for one hour to get an average core temp as well as an average clock speed. Before I get into the test results though, if you're liking this one, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps YouTube know to share this with other people who are building gaming rigs. So for the real bench testing, the Ryzen 7700X cores averaged 95C, which actually is pretty standard for the X model. So we have to take a look at the average clock speeds achieved, which were about 5.1 gigahertz. In my case, for my CPU and my motherboard, that's actually a pretty decent speed. As for the Prime95 testing, again, the 7700X cores averaged 95C, but this time they did it at an average clock speed of 4.85 gigahertz, which again, is actually pretty decent for my setup, especially in Prime95 with the smallest FFT testing selected. As far as sound output goes, I did measure the sound output Put with my phone about three feet away from the PC. I saw somewhere between 33 and 36 dBA worth of sound output, which is pretty decent for this cooling performance. Again, this testing is from my cell phone, that's why I gave the range. It's likely somewhere around there if I had more accurate equipment, but that should give you a relative idea. This setup isn't too loud for the cooling performance that it provides. 
So yeah, the performance was quite good in my opinion. Definitely better than some of the larger air towers that I've tested. And I really like that I don't feel like we're compromising on build quality, included accessories, ease of installation, or the overall aesthetics of this cooler. It's just a really nice unit. The installation was easy, and I like that the Atmos coolers do have four-point mounting. This will definitely help ensure an increased amount of pressure and more even application of the cooler CPU surface. You can get the Atmos all-in-one coolers in the 240 or the 360 variant. You can get the Atmos all-in-one coolers in the 240 or 360 mil variants. The 240 that I have here today was definitely enough to keep my 7700X running well, so that was nice to see. For something like a 7900, maybe 7950, or an i9 on the Intel side, I would definitely try to grab that 360 mil version if your case supports it. At 140 bucks for the 240 mil version and 160 for the 360 mil version, I'm definitely a fan of this newer design. I definitely think it's a huge improvement in the Master Liquid series, and I would have no issues recommending it to someone looking for a cooler upgrade or building a whole new system. I'll have links to the cooler and to my build in the description below, so definitely head down there and check that out. If you're into gaming and home lab stuff, get subscribed and ring that bell for more. Until next time, stay cool.